What's up guys, I'm going to compare five of the best Wi-Fi 7 routers right now. We're going to talk about their specs, speed tests, range tests. I've done individually for each one of these with Wi-Fi devices such as these. I have all those numbers right here, so we'll go over all of those numbers. So we're going to start with the Nighthawk. We got a sync button right here. We got on and off button right here. And when the router is on, there are some LED indicators right here. So we got a bunch of vents up on top and on the bottom. And Netgear actually sells something that can be wall mounted that screws into this. So in theory, this router can actually be wall mounted. And then in terms of the back, we got a factory reset. We got the on and off. We got a 10 gig LAN port. We got four gigabit, uh, four individual gigabit ports. We got a USB 3.0 port. We got a 10 gig WAN port, the internet port essentially. And we got the power that goes right here. Next, we got the ASUS RTBE96U. High performance Wi-Fi 7 router is absolutely correct. We got Wi-Fi 7, got some nice designs going, some LED indicators right here. And then we got a WPS button and an LED button, very similar to the Nighthawk. However, the ports are a bit different on this one. So we got the power right here on and off switch. USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. And then, actually very similar to the Nighthawk, we got the factory reset, we got four gigabit ports, we got a 10 gig internet port, and then we got a 10 gig LAN port. So again, if my internet goes in at five, it could come out as five. I can also use these as well to get some other devices connected. And this doesn't look like it offers a wall mounting option. Next, we get to the Rogue version of the B96U, which is the GTBE98 Pro, ROG standing for Republic of Gamers. So you could customize the LED of this, you could change the pattern of this or, and or the colors, which is nice. It overall, it kind of looks like a nicer BE96U. Uh, very similar over here with the LEDs, with, with the buttons essentially identical in terms of the antenna movement it's identical i should have showed this with the b96u but this is as far as the antennas move and it could go left and right as well uh, but not a whole lot of movement there and then in terms of the ports pretty much identical to the b96u with the exception that four of these ports support 2.5 gigabit speeds instead of gigabit speeds uh, but the internet still could go in at 10 and come out at 10. So in my case, it would go in at five and come out as five. And then you do have an additional gigabit port right here. And we have the Archer B800. We got three buttons on the bottom. We got a WPS button, Wi-Fi on or off, and an LED on or off button. And you could customize some of these LEDs in the front within the app to show different patterns or different images or, or show the time if you wanted to. We got a bunch of vents and we got some ports in the back. So we got four 2.5 gigabit ports. We got two 10 gigabit ports. Or optionally, instead of this 10 gigabit port, you can actually use this SFP Plus port, which is also 10 gigabit. So you can use this or that. And again, can handle very fast internet speeds. So you would plug in the internet speeds to one of these. USB 3.0, power, and power on and off. And then some vents on the bottom as well. And finally, we got the Archer G800. Looks something straight out of Star Wars. Looks like one of those spaceships that is flying or fighter jets or whatever it's called. And this part looks like Darth Vader to me. So there is an LED that lights up here, LEDs that light up here, and LED that lights up to give it that LED look on the bottom. We got vents on the bottom, vents at the top. Um, so a decent number of vents. We got the buttons in the front, so the WPS, Wi-Fi on and off. We got the game boost or game turbo mode and the LED on and off. And in terms of the ports, it's very similar to the rest. Uh, we got the power on and off factory reset. We got four 2.5 gigabit ports. We got two 10 gig ports right there. We got an optional 10 gig SFP plus port. So you can use the ethernet port here or the SFP plus port there. USB 3.0 and power. And this one is an optional gaming port if you wanted to use that. Now we get to the power supplies and there's really only three different kinds because the ASUS routers have exactly the same power supplies and the TP-Link routers also have exactly the same power supplies. The Netgear uses 100 to 120 volts. That's what the plug looks like and it's 60 watts of power. You can also ignore the labels. That's something I use just so I could keep track. Here's a closer look at the ASUS power supplies. It's 100 to 240 volts and the output is 65 watts and that's what the plug itself looks like. 
And finally, we have the TP-Link power supplies. It's the largest of the bunch, and it is 100 to 240 volts, and the output is 75 watts, and that's what the plug itself looks like. So we're going to jump straight to the internet speed test, and as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be 5 gigabits per second upload and download, and all of these can support internet speeds of up to 10 gigs, so... There's no issue with any one of these reaching those speeds when I'm connected via Ethernet. However, with Wi-Fi, that's a different story. So looking at the results right here, we could see that in the Wi-Fi 7 category, the Archer GE800 took the cake overall. Now, all of them are crazy fast, very, very fast. But the one clear winner in the Wi-Fi 7 section happens to be the GE800. Now, in the Wi-Fi 6C section, they're all a lot closer to each other in terms of speed. And really, what took the cake in terms of the download speed was the G800, which, I mean, they're all right around there. And the overall fastest upload speed happened to be the BE96U by ASUS. So that was faster. But again, all of these are kind of within the ballpark. There was more of a difference with Wi-Fi 7 than Wi-Fi 6C. Now, to find out the true performance of these routers, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. So this way, I get rid of my ISP and the public speed test server. So that way, it's isolating just the router itself. Looking at the results, we can see across the board, all the speeds have gone up. And the download section winner for Wi-Fi 7 happens to go to the BE800, and the upload section goes to the GE800. But overall, they're all incredibly, incredibly fast, especially in the download sections. But the TP links kind of took the cake in terms of the upload sections. In terms of the Wi-Fi 6C speeds, it looks like the Netgear and the ASUS BE96U were pretty close to each other. However, the ASUS did take the cake for the Wi-Fi 6C overall. Next, we get into range tests, and range will vary drastically by location because it really depends on the number of obstructions that you have. So essentially, the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're going to get. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, things of that nature, that's typically going to hurt your range. Now, all five of these are tested in the same exact environment. So looking at the results at 20 feet away, it looks like the Wi-Fi 7 download speed went to the BE800 and the Wi-Fi 7 upload speed went to the GE800. And the Wi-Fi 6E download and upload speeds went to the ASUS BE96U. Now, at 50 feet away outside my place, it looks like the Wi-Fi 7 download and upload section went to the GE800, with the BE800 not being too far behind overall. And in terms of the Wi-Fi 6C speeds, it looks like the ASUS BE96U took the download speeds, and the GE800 took the upload speeds, but both of those were pretty similar to each other in terms of the Wi-Fi 6E speeds overall. And at 100 feet, this is when I'm across the street and still getting some phenomenal numbers overall with all of these very, very usable speeds. But the Wi-Fi 7 download section went to the GE800, whereas the Wi-Fi 7 upload section went to the BE800. And in terms of the Wi-Fi 6E speeds, it looks like the download went to the G800 and the upload went to the BE96U. Now again, all of these are fantastic for range, but I'm just picking winners based on the tire top speeds. For setup and configuration, all of these have their respective apps they use to set this thing up. With the Necker, you get the Nighthawk app. With the ASUS routers, you get the ASUS router app. With the TP-Link routers, you get the Tether app. So in terms of options, if you wanna go to Tinkerland, basically if you wanna tinker all these settings, ASUS is pretty much kind of the king for that, uh, especially if you go to the browser interface, you could really, really customize a lot of stuff. So it has way more options than the rest, period. Uh, the other good thing about ASUS is that everything's included in the price. So parental controls, additional protections, all of that stuff is included. And with the ROG uh, router, the Republic of Gamers, you can also customize the LED lighting on this with patterns and different colors as well. So you get a lot of customization, essentially, you could play with. With the Netgear, the Nighthawk, the app itself is pretty simplified, gives you the main stuff. And if you want to tinker with it some more, you go to the browser interface, but it's not going to give you as many options as the ASUS did. Granted, it still gives you a decent number of options. 
Now with the Netgear, if you, it has super basic parental controls, but if you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. It also has additional protections if you want that as a separate subscription as well. They do come with a free trial, uh, so you guys could try it out. Uh, but generally speaking, um, it does have separate subscriptions should you choose to get all the features that it offers. With the Tether app, it's kind of a similar type of deal, but the parental controls on the Tether app are more. So you do get, you do get more customizations. Uh, you, you could set time limits and things of that nature, but not fully. So if you want full, full parental controls, the TP-Link also requires a separate subscription. So one thing I should mention though with the TP, with both of these router is within the Tether app with the BE800, you can actually customize this stuff, make your own logos or put the time here and things of that nature. And with the GE800, you can also pick different patterns for the LEDs or different light colors as well. So there is some customization with that. Um, but again, in terms of options, Asus is definitely the way to go. Now to summarize, all of these are fantastic routers and there's various reasons to get each one of these. Now without going too much into detail, let's just pick Asus as, as an example. So if you were like, hey, you know what? I really like the BE96U, for example. Should I get that? And a few good reasons could be like, hey, if you're someone that wants to tinker with settings, or if you want everything included in the price with additional features, Asus is a fantastic choice. If you have an existing Asus router that supports AI mesh, that's another fantastic choice because this supports AI mesh and you can make a mesh network out of them. So that's one example of picking Asus. Uh, because honestly, all of these had fantastic performance. They all have a decent number of options with Asus, again, having the most number of options. But if I had to pick a winner, and again, this is very difficult and price may sway me one way or another if something's on sale or, or things of that nature, but I probably have to pick the GE800 as the overall winner because overall, performance-wise, it won a lot of, not everything, but it did win a lot of the speed test and range test overall. So I'm gonna go with the GE800 as the overall winner of this um, but again, honestly, it's so hard to pick because all of these are fantastic. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.